the engineering disaster behind Pratt & Whitney's R4360 Wasp Major engine, the most powerful radial piston engine America ever produced. With 28 cylinders arranged in four perfect rows, generating an earth-shaking 4,300 horsepower. Picture this, an engine so massive it made B-29 Super Fortresses look underpowered, so complex that seasoned mechanics dreaded working on it. But here's what they don't tell you in the history books. This masterpiece of American engineering was also its greatest mechanical nightmare. Behind every thunderous takeoff lurked a devil's bargain. For every hour in the air, crews spent countless hours on the ground, wrestling with overheating cylinders, failed spark plugs, and oil leaks that turned hangers into black puddles of despair. This is the untold story of how America's mightiest engine became aviation's most beautiful disaster. The R4360 Wasp Major wasn't just an engine. It was ambition cast in aluminum and steel. 28 cylinders arranged in four rows of seven, each one a fist of forged aluminum pounding out power. At 71 and a half liters of displacement, this behemoth dwarfed every other piston engine in the American arsenal. When those cylinders fired in sequence, they didn't just run, they orchestrated a symphony of controlled chaos that could generate 4,300 horsepower from a package weighing 3,870 pounds. This mechanical monster powered the giants of the sky. The Convair B-36 Peacemaker with six of these beasts turning massive propellers the Boeing C-97 Stratofreighter that kept Berlin alive, and Howard Hughes' legendary Spruce Goose. Each engine contained 56 spark plugs, miles of internal piping, and a supercharger system that could compress air like a blacksmith's hammer. Engineering statistics alone inspire awe. A bore of 5 and 3 quarter inches, a stroke of 6 inches, and a compression ratio that pushed fuel to its limits. The crankshaft, a masterpiece of forged steel, weighed over 300 pounds and featured seven main bearings to handle the tremendous forces. Each connecting rod was a work of art, machined to tolerances measured in ten thousandths of an inch. Propeller reduction gearing, necessary to convert the engine's 2700 RPM to a propeller-friendly 900 RPM, contained gears the size of dinner plates, meshing with clockwork precision. The Wasp Major represented the absolute limit of what engineers could squeeze from reciprocating technology. It was a raw power incarnate a testament to American industrial might, and a preview of engineering hubris that would haunt every crew chief who dared to maintain one. Enjoying this story of ambition versus reality? Hit subscribe. We've got more tales of legendary engines that push too far. The story begins in 1940 with war clouds gathering and Pratt and & Whitney's engineers racing against time. The military demanded more power, always more power, and conventional radial engines had hit their limits. The solution seemed elegant. If two rows of cylinders were good and three were better, then four rows would be unstoppable. But elegance on paper became agony in metal. The first prototypes literally tore themselves apart. Cooling air couldn't reach the rear cylinders, turning them into furnaces that warped heads and burned valves. The gear reduction system, necessary to slow the propeller to usable speeds, generated forces that cracked engine cases. Test engines would run for mere hours before catastrophic failure sent pistons through cowlings and oil spraying across test cells. The cooling challenge alone nearly killed the project. Engineers tried everything. Modified baffling, relocated oil coolers, even experimental cylinder fin designs that looked more like abstract art than engineering. The spiral baffles they eventually developed channeled air in a corkscrew pattern around each cylinder. But manufacturing these complex shapes pushed foundry technology to its limits. Each cylinder head required 127 individual fins, precisely spaced and shaped, creating a production nightmare that sent costs soaring. Engineers pushed to the breaking point worked around the clock, redesigning cooling baffles, strengthening cases, and reworking the labyrinth oil system. Each solution created new problems. The engine's complexity grew exponentially. What started as an evolution became a revolution that nobody fully understood. By 1944, when the first production engines rolled out, even Pratt & Whitney's best engineers privately admitted it created a maintenance monster. Despite its demons, the Wasp Major didn't find moments of glory. When six of them powered the massive B-36 Peacemaker into the stratosphere, America possessed a bomber that could reach any target on Earth. Those engines, working in concert with four jet engines, gave the Strategic Air Command a weapon that kept the Cold War cold. In the civilian world, the Wasp Major powered the Boeing 377 Stratocruiser, turning transatlantic flight from an ordeal into luxury. Passengers sipped champagne and pressurized comfort while 28 cylinders per engine hammered away outside, each one doing its part to shrink the world. The engine proved its worth in unexpected ways. The Douglas C-124 Globemaster II, powered by four Wasp Majors, 
became the backbone of military airlift operations, pulling everything from tanks to entire helicopter units across oceans. In Korea, these mighty transports kept UN forces supplied, their engines grinding through tropical heat and arctic cold with equal determination. The Fairchild C-119 flying boxcar, with two WASP majors, earned its stripes dropping paratroopers and supplies in combat zones where jets feared to tread. The low-speed torque and reliability, when properly maintained, made these piston giants irreplaceable for certain missions. The engine even set records. In 1946, a WASP major-powered P-2V Neptune flew 11,236 miles nonstop from Australia to Ohio, proving that raw piston power could still compete in the emerging jet age. For a brief, shining moment, it seemed the complexity might be worth it. Pilots reported the distinctive sound. A deep guttural roar, overlaid with a high-pitched whine from the superchargers, inspired confidence. Here was American engineering at its finest, they said. Here was victory made manifest. But behind closed hangar doors, the truth was hemorrhaging oil onto concrete floors. The WASP Major Achilles' heel wasn't one flaw, it was death by a thousand cuts. Those 56 spark plugs per engine? They fouled constantly, requiring replacement every 25 to 50 flight hours. The rear cylinders, despite all the redesigns, still ran dangerously hot. Mechanics discovered that cylinder head temperatures could vary by over 100 degrees between the front and back rows, creating thermal stresses that cracked heads and warped pistons. The oil system became a particular nightmare. With oil flowing through galleries machined into the massive crankcase, any small manufacturing flaw became a potential catastrophe. Engines would consume several gallons of oil per hour in normal operation, and that was when everything worked correctly. One B-36 crew chief memorably observed, if it's not leaking oil, it's out of oil. The magneto system added another layer of complexity. Each engine required four magnetos to fire all 56 spark plugs, and these units sat in the worst possible location directly behind the engine where heat soaked everything. Magneto failures became so common that crews carried spares on every flight. The nose case, which housed critical accessories, regularly cracked from the combination of heat cycling and vibration. Even the engine mounts suffered, with the rubber isolation units deteriorating faster than anyone predicted, leading to vibrations that could shake rivets loose from airframes. Most damning statistic? Maintenance requirements were extraordinary. For every flight hour, maintenance crews could log multiple hours of work far more than contemporary engines. In an era where jet engines were beginning to promise hundreds of hours between overhauls, the WASP Major demanded constant attention, like a temperamental thoroughbred that never rested. The breaking point came in the early 1950s when a series of B-36 incidents raised serious concerns about fleet safety. Engines were experiencing failures in flight, propeller-related problems were increasing, and maintenance issues were mounting. The Air Force launched investigations that revealed troubling truths. The WASP Major's complexity was creating cascading failure modes that engineers hadn't fully anticipated. Reports from the period described missions where multiple engines experienced problems, forcing crews to shut down engines and limp home on reduced power. Warning lights would illuminate in sequence as various systems reached their limits. Investigations consistently found evidence of material fatigue. Cracked cylinder heads, worn bearings, and stress fractures throughout engine components that have been pushed beyond their design limits. The crisis deepened when investigators discovered systemic problems across the entire fleet. Propeller shaft failures were traced to harmonic vibrations that nobody predicted. The massive Hamilton standard propellers, each blade weighing hundreds of pounds, created resonances that traveled through the reduction gears and into the engine structure itself. Emergency modifications including installing vibration dampers and redesigning motor mounts. But these were bandages on a hemorrhaging wound. Ground crews began performing propeller tracking before every flight using specialized equipment to ensure each blade was perfectly aligned, a process that added hours to pre-flight preparation. Yet, in this moment of crisis, American ingenuity shone through. Pratt & Whitney engineers working with Air Force maintenance crews developed an entirely new maintenance protocol. They created specialized tools, rewrote manuals, and established a parts pipeline that could deliver critical components within hours. They couldn't fix the WASP Major's fundamental flaws, but they could manage them. As one Air Force official noted, we didn't tame the beast, we just learned to live with it. By the time production ended in 1955, Pratt & Whitney had built 18,697 WASP Major engines. Each one represented both triumph and tragedy. The triumph of pushing reciprocating technology to its absolute limit, and the tragedy of complexity overwhelming practicality. The numbers tell a sobering story. While earlier radial engines like the R2800 achieved time between overhaul ratings of 2,000 hours or more, 
the Wasp Major typically required overhaul at much shorter intervals. The engine that powered America's nuclear deterrent became a cautionary tale in engineering circles, proof that more isn't always better. The complexity carries its own costs. The financial burden was staggering. Each Wasp Major represented a massive investment in both initial cost and ongoing maintenance. Spare parts inventories for a squadron of B-36s could fill entire warehouses. The Air Force discovered that maintaining six Wasp Majors on a single B-36 required enormous resources. From specialized tools to trained personnel to vast quantities of spare parts, airlines flying the Boeing 377 found that engine maintenance consumed a significant portion of their operating budgets. When Boeing and Douglas offered jet-powered versions of their transports in the mid-1950s, airlines eagerly embraced the simpler, more reliable turbine technology. The writing was on the wall. The age of the complex reciprocating engine was ending. Today, only a handful of flying Wasp Majors survive, mostly in vintage aircraft lovingly maintained by dedicated crews who understand their temperamental nature. At air shows, when a Wasp Major costs a life, all 28 cylinders eventually finding their rhythm, spectators witness not just an engine running, but a piece of history breathing. The ground shakes, windows rattle, and for a moment, you can feel the raw ambition of an era when engineers believed any problem could be solved with enough cylinders. The Wasp Major teaches us a profound lesson about the limits of mechanical ambition. In pushing reciprocating engine technology to its absolute limit, Pratt & Whitney created something that worked, but at a cost that ultimately doomed it. This engine represents the exact moment when complexity overwhelmed capability, when the cure became worse than the disease. Yet, we shouldn't judge the Wasp Major too harshly served when needed, powered aircraft that kept the peace and pushed engineers to think differently about propulsion. Its very failures helped usher in the jet age by proving that pistons had reached their zenith. Sometimes the greatest service a technology can provide is showing us it's time to move on. The Wasp Major stands as a monument to American industrial ambition, beautiful, powerful, flawed and ultimately unsustainable. It reminds us that in engineering, as in life, the most impressive solution isn't always the best solution. True innovation means knowing not just how far you can push, but when to stop pushing. If the Wasp Major's stories of ambition versus reality hit home, drop a like and subscribe for more tales of legendary engines. Next week, we're diving into another giant, the Bristol Centaurus or the Wright 3350. Let us know in the comments which mechanical monster you want to see exposed next, because every great engine has a dark secret, and we're here to reveal them all.